we have two pairs of eagles and they have young and it's just, it's really neat to see how they, they go in and out through the wetland, through the trees. Nestled amongst the rolling hills where Harford meets Baltimore County, the landscape at Willow Oaks Farm is a seamless blend of nature and agriculture. 30 thoroughbreds roam the pastures, and row crops like corn, wheat, and soybeans grow in adjacent fields. And then there's the stream, Yellow Branch, a tributary to Little Gunpowder Falls. It's been in the ground for three seasons now. It's had a lot of full growing seasons, so the vegetation's coming up nicely and taking over. Believe it or not, Yellow Branch's lazy bends are as carefully cultivated as the neighboring soybeans. Every branch here is intentional, every curve calculated, every pool designed. It's the result of a three-year transformation that took a straight stream, prone to flooding and erosion, and made it meander. Farm manager Darren Martin remembers what it was like before, back when a bad flood could cause the farmer that leases these fields to lose a crop. About 12 years ago, kind of right where we're standing, there was I, it probably was close to the 100-year flood, and this whole plain was just underwater. The damage from flooding is, is catastrophic at some points. It depends on how the, what the height of the, of the crop is, of course. When it's at its worst, it can just decimate things. That streams are meant to be serpentine is a relatively new realization. In fact, we've spent centuries trying to control them through damming and ditching, forcing the waters through straight, deep channels. Undoing all that is a sizable endeavor. Stream restoration is relatively new science. It's only been around for 25 or 30 years. What we're finding is that our streams don't look and function anything like they used to do historically. Many of these streams have very high eroding stream banks, and every time it rains, the water erodes those banks and delivers sediment downstream. As president and owner of Ecotone, Scott McGill works to make streams look like they might have hundreds of years ago. He and project manager Chris Kidd are on site at their latest job, a 4,000-foot restoration on a farm in northern Baltimore County. They've got some horses on here, and then we're surrounded by some hay crop fields, and then upstream here we've got some corn and soybean fields. And I'm guessing at some point, whoever owned the property probably straightened it, probably ditched it, and that was a typical approach back in 1940s and 50s to basically maximize cropland. The banks of the existing stream are about five feet tall. During a heavy rain, the channel acts as a chute. We just have a sheer bank here, no vegetation, exposed dirt. So when we do have high flood events, that water is just rushing past here, actively eroding it and taking that sediment downstream and ultimately to the bay. The solution? Lower the floodplain, add bends to the stream, and incorporate materials to slow the water and limit erosion. You can imagine water in a flood event when it's getting up on this floodplain and it's running into all this woody material. It's kind of banging off of everything. It's not finding a straight shot. District Manager Jim Enzer of the Baltimore County Soil Conservation District works to help property owners protect their land and water resources. He points out, what goes into this stream eventually ends up in the drinking water of nearly two million people in the Baltimore region. Baltimore County holds the three reservoirs for the Baltimore metropolitan area's drinking water. A lot of this is gonna go right into the reservoirs. If it's pollution and runoff and sediment and things like that, farmers are putting in their practices, but with some of these storms we have, it, they're overwhelmed. And if the soil moves, then things tied in with the soil are now in the water. Things like nutrient fertilizer from crop fields. Agricultural runoff before it gets to the stream needs to go through, say, a wetland or a filtration system. So our design includes a lot of vegetation. And they uptake a lot of those nutrients, process them, so that we're not only processing nutrients, but we're also storing sediment. Today's undertaking? Installing a concrete stream crossing for vehicles, farm equipment, and livestock. In a few months, the project will be complete, but it will take a few years to reach its full potential. Back at Willow Oaks Farm, 
The stream system is fresh off a test from Mother Nature. Four inches of rain in an hour and a half. And the flash flood that took place after that, the water levels just came up so, so quickly. And you could just see how the floodwaters were in the wetlands and how the creek did what it was designed to do. A couple of days later, you couldn't even tell that anything happened. And that is how Scott measures success. Nature always gives us a report card on how things are going. We had a big flood. You know, how did our site respond? 